Welcome to Electrical Engineering with Excel. If there is current in a wire, there will be some amount of heat generated as wire has some amount of electrical resistance. There are numerous applications where it is necessary to reduce weight and let the wire get fairly hot. The estimation of heat rise in a wire is typically done with charts. Many of the electrical engineering calculations before computers were accomplished graphically. In this video, I'm taking one of those heat rise charts and using a plot digitizer to create XY pairs from the chart. Then using the power of Excel's trend line tool to calculate the heat rise with an equation rather than the chart. You could do the calculation with a hand calculator, but many designs of system cables will have multiple wire gauges used and will often change during the iteration of the design as the power supply load currents evolve and mature. Using the power of Excel allows for instant calculation and change management of multiple wire bundles. Let's start with the easy way, calculating the wire gauge for negligible heat rise, where the heat rise of your wire is hardly noticeable, even to the touch of your finger. Circular mills is commonly used for wire calculations. You may want to watch the User Defined Functions video, which uses the American Wire Gauge Diameter and Resistance Math. A mill is one one thousandth of an inch. Let's consider a wire with a diameter D. The diameter in circular mills is D squared. A well used guideline for wire having negligible heat rise is 400 circular mills per ampere. For example, the square root of 400 is 20 mils. 24 gauge wire happens to be 0 0.0201 inches or 20.1 mils, which is suitable for one amp of current. Let's look at an example of a one foot run of wire with a return, which would be two total feet. 24 gauge is 0 0.01 ohms per foot. The total power is only 20 milliwatts, so that's pretty cool. This is a good practice for lab or ground-based equipment where weight is not a concern. However, you can run the wire hotter and reduce weight, size, and cost. This is very prevalent in airborne applications for weight reduction or automotive applications or anything where cost reduction is a key. You are limited by the temperature rating of the insulation. The melting point of copper is 1,083 degrees C, so you can rest assured the insulation will melt before the copper. Here is a commonly used chart to select a wire size based on a temperature rise. The x-axis is the conductor wire gauge, which is linear to the gauge number, but logarithmic to the diameter. The y-axis is the current, which is on a logarithmic scale. There is a line for 10 degrees C temperature rise, and lines for 35 degree and 140 degrees rise. It's based on copper wire and still air at 25 degrees C. For example, 20 amps in a 12 gauge wire is a little less than 35 degrees temperature rise. A 35 degree rise is prevalent in house wiring. The electrical code requires at least 12 gauge diameter for a 20 amp breaker. There is a disclaimer in the chart which states the approximate actual rise depends on the heat transfer characteristics in the installation. For instance, an application that has forced air cooling would result in a lower temperature rise. The chart has correction factors for how many wires are in the bundle. The multiplying factor is 1 for a 2 to 3 wire bundle, which is most common. With more wires in the bundle, the wires add heat to one another. I did a video on digitizing spec plots. You will want to watch that video to understand how that works because I'm skipping the steps of digitizing the plot in this video. It uses a web-based tool to trace out a plot shape and output XY pairs that match it. Then the Excel chart with those XY pairs will have the trend line tool applied. Here's a screenshot 
of the chart within the digitizer tool. As you can see, it shows the dots here on the 140 degree rise line in red. Notice the y axis is logarithmic, so we will be seeing logarithmic curves. Let's make trend lines for all three lines in the plot and make some observations. Here's the 10 degree rise curve, now the 35 degree rise, and finally, the 140 degree rise. The trend line option I selected with the highest coefficient of determination is the exponential trend line. The R squared numbers are practically one, which is as good as it gets. Notice the exponent for the 35 degree and 140 degree curves are the same out to four digits at negative 0.1527x. The exponent for the 10 degree rise is remarkably close at only 2% lower. So we can assume that all three exponents are the same, and therefore the only difference is the coefficient. Remember, this is only an approximation, so high precision is not necessary. We can also observe the coefficients are not linear. Let's go plot the coefficients. Here's the plot for the three coefficients. We only have three points to work with, but it's highly correlated to a power function. Let's make a formula to return the wire gauge for a specific current and temperature rise. Here's the trend line for the 35 degree plot. We can express it in a general form like this, which has A as the coefficient. We then rearrange to solve for X, which is the wire gauge. Remember from the chart, the y-axis is the current, so I'll put an i where the y was and plug in the coefficient 135.3453. Here's the coefficient formula where x is the temperature. We will just stick that formula in place of the coefficient. So there we have a calculation of the chart in one nifty formula. The wire gauge is an integer, so we will need to round down to the number of the nearest integer. Remember, a decrease in the gauge number correlates to an increase in diameter. So we are essentially rounding up to the next highest diameter. Let's see a couple comparisons graphically between the formula and the chart. Here I plugged in 10 amps and a 140 degrees, which yields a gauge of 21.5. This came out remarkably close. Remember the scale between each gauge number has a logarithmic spread. So I'll take it. Here's another comparison. Here I plugged in 2 amps and 35 degrees, which yields 27.4. This too came out close. I'll take it too. Now we will employ the bundle factor into the equation. The correction factor is for current carrying capacity, which is reduced when bundled with other hot wires. Since we are returning a wire gauge and not a current, we need to increase the current input to return the larger equivalent gauge. This is the equation we have. We will simply divide the current I by B, the bundle factor. Most all wire inventory that exists on the market are even gauges. It's been that way forever. I imagine there are just a few demanding instances where gauge diameter matters enough to require granularity to an odd gauge. It's just a matter of inventory simplification, like preferred values of resistors. Excel has an even function. The problem is it returns a number rounded up to the nearest even integer. We need to round up to the next larger diameter, so we need to round down to the next even gauge. The function does us no good. We can simply check the calculated gauge with the is even function. If it's true, we return the rounded gauge. If not, we just subtract one. Here's the beginning of the spreadsheet. The ambient temperature in degree C is an input that will be added to the wire temperature rise of each wire to give the wire temperature. The three inputs for the bundle set are the current in amperes, the allowed temperature rise in degree C, and bundle count. The first calculation needed is the bundle factor. It will use the bundle count 
in an XLOOKUP table of the bundle factors. Then we can use the formula above to calculate the wire gauge. The next cell is the rounded down wire gauge, which is the next larger diameter. The equation for the even gauge will subtract 1 from the next larger AWG if it's not even. The wire temperature is simply the sum of the ambient temperature and the wire temperature rise. We will use the power of XLOOKUP to return suggested insulation types from a table having the insulation abbreviations and their associated maximum temperature ratings and look up the rated temperature. The first thing I'm going to do is merge some cell styles from another workbook I have opened on another screen. You may recall in the voltage regulator video, we made cell styles that had protection on or off and various colors. Click yes to merge styles that have the same name. From the insert tab, select table or press control T. It recognizes that it has headers, so click OK and turn off the filter functionality. Now let's assign cell styles. The inputs are the ambient temperature, current, temperature rise, and bundle count, which are unprotected to allow user modification. The rest are outputs. The output cells have protection on, so the user doesn't overwrite the formulas when the sheet is protected. I'm going to do data validation for all the inputs. Watch the foolproofing Excel engineering workbooks video for info on that. I'll do ambient temperature first. From the data tab, select data validation. On the setting tab, Set the allow criteria to decimal between minus 20 and 200. We don't need an input message. I'll set the error alert style to information and have an error message that says, is that really the temperature you wanted to enter? This still allows the user to input anything they want as far as the decimal number is concerned. It's just a friendly reminder that the user may have entered an unrealistic temperature. Now doing data validation for the current. We'll make it a decimal number greater than zero. The input message would be nice with the title of wire current and a message like must be greater than zero. I'll copy that and use it for the error alert title and message. Now for the temperature rise validation. I'll make it a decimal number between 1 and 140. I'll make the title Temperature Rise of the Wire in Degree C. With a message like, must be a decimal number from 1 to 40. Then test it out. The bundle count is simple. That will be a whole number between 1 and 30. Let's do a title of number of wires bundled together and must be a whole number between 1 and 30. The error alert title I'll make uh, out of range with the same description. Let's go check it out. I put a temporary snip of the bundle factors from the temp rise chart. We can use XLOOKUP to return the bundle factor. I'll enter the minimum number of conductors for each factor and the associated bundle factor on the right. I'll do XLOOKUP 
with the XLOOKUP value being the number of the bundle count. The lookup array is the bundle count in the table. And the return array is the bundle factors in the table. Let the if not found argument be a null and the match mode be exact match or next smaller item. And we get a bundle factor of one for the two conductors. Five conductors is 0.8 and 30 conductors is 0.5, and one conductor is 1.6. It works. I'll go ahead and make that a table, which I should have done first, and we no longer need the clip from the wire rise table. Now we can do the calculated AWG, and we have the equation right here for us to go by. It's the natural log of the current I over the bundle factor B, divided by 21.7675 times t to the 0 0.5073 power. All that over minus 0 0.1527. Next, using the round down function in the next larger AWG cell, with zero decimal places, returns the next largest diameter gauge. We know from looking at the graph earlier that 12 gauge was slightly bigger than required for 20 amps with a 35 degree C rise. Now for the next larger even AWG. I'll use an if statement where the logical test argument is the is even function evaluating the rounded AWG. If the value is true, we just return the rounded AWG. If not, we return the rounded AWG minus one because we know it's an odd number, therefore returning the next largest diameter or even number wire gauge. I'll increase the current a bit, and the rounded AWG is now 11, and the next larger even is 10 gauge. Perfect. Moving on with the wire temperature, I'll name the ambient temperature cell TAMB. The wire temperature will be the ambient temperature plus the temp rise input. That's a bit conservative since the rounded gauge will often be bigger than the more exact calculated gauge. Moving over to the right, I built a table of wire type abbreviations and their associated maximum temperatures. We will start by making this a table and turn the filter function off. In the suggested insulation cell, we can use the XLOOKUP function again with the lookup value being the wire temperature. The lookup array is the temperature column and the return array is the wire types text column. Set the if not found argument to a null and the match mode will be an exact match or next larger which is one. Now to display the rated temperature, I'll copy the same formula and paste it in the rated temperature cell and return the value from the temp column. You can add other wire types and their associated temperatures to the table and it will expand and be part of the lookup without changing the formulas. I'm pasting in a numerical reference text box that shows the negative gauge numbers that correspond to the 2 aught through 4 aught gauges and do some conditional formatting on the gauge cells to indicate in red that they are out of range of the American wire gauge. It's important to select the next larger AWG and the next larger even AWG so the conditional formatting can be applied to both at the same time. On the Home tab, select Conditional Formatting, then Highlight Cell Rules, then Greater Than, Enter 56, which is the smallest wire in the gauge set, 
and we will just go with the default light red fill with dark red text format. Do another highlighting cells rule with less than selected. That number will be minus 3, which corresponds to 4 alt gauge. Let's check it out. I'll enter a current of 1 milliamp, and the results are above 56 and are shown in red. 100 amps returns legit gauges, but 1000 amps is out of range. I forgot to make the net name an input cell style. Then turn off those ugly grid lines. I'll protect the sheet and show that the inputs can be changed and the output cells can't be messed with. However, you must unprotect the sheet to add extra rows. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.